Greetings, everyone, and welcome to part 12, I believe. Yes, part 12 of my 2012 DVD and Blu-ray collection overview. This time around, we're actually going to take a look at the horror DVDs that I have. Now, I do also have a horror Blu-ray shelf, which is over here, and there's quite a you know nice assortment of stuff there. You can check that out in a previous episode. I've already covered that. Uh, this time around, we're just going to take a look at the, the various horror DVDs I have, and also just begin to get a touch on the uh, sci-fi section right at the tail end of the second shelf here, and uh, we'll do the the two sci-fi shelves tomorrow, or in the next episode, whenever that happens to be. For now, it's primarily horror DVDs, today on the Multimedia Chronicles. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> okay, that's really cheesy. Um, yeah, so here we are at the horror DVD shelves. Yeah, well, mostly horror anyway. There's a little bit of sci-fi at the end here, but uh, for the most part, this is all that remains of the horror DVDs. Um, I put most of my focus in, on the horror section into the Blu-rays. Um, and you can actually check out which horror Blu-rays I have at this point in time uh, in a previous episode. So uh, for your convenience, I'll put the link to that in the description down below. Now, I've done in-depth reviews of quite a few of these over the past few years. And um, any titles that I've done, you know, videos about, I will post links to those in the description below as well. So long and the short of it is, check the description below if you'd like more information about some of these titles. Alrighty, so without any further ado, let's take a look at what we got here. First off, let's take a look at these ones. These are some uh, double bills. We got The Land That Time Forgot and The People That Time Forgot. Not technically horror, but it's part of the Midnight Movies collection from MGM, which uh, I'd really like to get all of, actually. There's 50 volumes total with two movies per volume, so a total of 100 Midnight Movies. Not too bad. And here we got The uh, Panic in Year Zero and The Last Man on Earth, which is actually the first ever adaptation, film adaptation of I Am Legend. Uh, the second, of course, was The Omega Man with Charlton Heston, which I have on Blu-ray, and I Am Legend, which I used to have on Blu-ray, but it was actually Annetta's, uh, my ex's, and she took it with her. Actually, I think she sold it long before we split up. And uh, this one's actually from 20th Century Fox, so I guess... The Midnight Movies was like a co-thing between MGM and Fox. Anyway, uh, this is probably my favorite one right here. It's Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror. Great stuff. I watch those every Halloween, like clockwork. It's just fantastic. And here uh, we have a couple of Val Luton movies. Uh, this is sort of a similar thing that Warner Brothers put out. I think it was Warner. Yeah, it was Warner Brothers. Um, Val Luton, of course, did the Cat People movies originally. Uh, this is two of his other ones, I Walked with a Zombie and... Robert Louis Stevenson's The Body Snatcher, with Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi, actually. This is a really good one. Definitely recommend that. So, okay. That's the double features. And then we got Paradise Lost, which was sent to me by uh, a viewer. I think there's a sequel or two to this one as well. But uh, apparently quite a popular, uh, you know, cult film, sort of going out into the wilderness and bad shit happens. And then... Here we have sort of my found footage section. We've got The Last Broadcast, The St. Francisville Experiment, Paranormal Activity. I've not seen any of the sequels, but I really like the first one. I'll have to uh, check that out. Actually, they're prequels. It's like they're doing them in sort of reverse order. So like the second one occurs before this one, the third one occurs before the second one. Yeah. And then we have Rec and Rec 2, or Recording, whatever you want to call it. Uh, these two I'm probably going to replace fairly soon because they just put them out on Blu-ray and uh, I love these movies. I think it's just a fantastic series. This is of course the series that um, Quarantine was based on. Although Quarantine 2 is nothing like Recording 2. So yeah. Anyway. And I'll probably uh, replace this one with the Blu-ray as well. Definitely like to upgrade all of those. 
And let's see here. We got a few others. We have Omen 4, The Awakening. The only reason I kept that is because it's the only one that's not on Blu-ray. And, you know, being a completist, I wanted to have all of them. I still need to pick up the Blu-ray collection, but uh, I'll get that one of these days. Then we have Tales from the Crypt presents Demon Knight, which, uh, you know, made Billy Zane a household name for a little bit there. And we have Let Me In. Uh, that's another one I'd like to upgrade to Blu-ray, actually, because I watched that uh, this past Halloween and just loved it. And then we have... Uh, I can't remember how to pronounce it. Riet, I believe it's pronounced. Yes, I think that's right. Uh, Riet is basically the uh, original um, Dutch, I think. Oh, I'm terrible with remembering different cultures. I do apologize. Anyway, from Lars von Trier. Uh, it was sent to me by Dr. Brill a while ago, longtime YouTube uh, viewer. This is the original miniseries, foreign miniseries, that Kingdom Hospital was based on. So this is the original Kingdom Hospital, and apparently a lot creepier and scarier than the Americanized version. So, very cool. Nice little assortment of stuff. And then, of course, we all know The Ring. Well, this is Ringu, Anthology of Terror. This is the original Japanese version of The Ring, uh, and specifically... This is all four of them. There was actually four Ring movies in uh, Japan, and this is the entire collection. Uh, the Ring 2, much like Wreck 2, um, is nothing like the sequels here. There's actually two sequels and a prequel in this one. Honestly, uh, I thought it was kind of a mixed bag. I, I think the, the first one and one of the sequels was pretty good. But, uh, yeah, otherwise, you're not missing much by not seeing the sequels. And here we have the 35th anniversary exhumed edition of Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things, which is a really fun, uh, cheesy, low-budget zombie movie um, by... Who was it? It was directed by the same guy who did A Christmas Story and also Porky's. <laughs> what was his uh, name again? It was Bob Clark. That's who it was. Yeah, so Bob Clark, the director of A Christmas Story, which is, you know, a traditional Christmas movie that everybody watches, and Porky's. And, well, Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things was one of his first movies. And here we have several selections from the Fangoria Fright Fest collection. This was a great uh, collection of, of independent horror films. I really enjoyed these a lot. And uh, I think there's two more that I need to complete the set. But from what I've read about them, uh, I apparently have the best ones of the bunch. So we have Pig Hunt. If you only get one of these, get Pig Hunt. It is such a blast. It is so much fun. It's gory. It's cheesy. It's uh, it, it's just such a fun horror movie. You know, Hell in the Forest. Um, yeah, absolutely get Pig Hunt. It's it's just a blast. Uh, the Haunting, which is not actually called The Haunting. It's something else. The Spanish uh, ghost movie, quite good. Hunger which uh, actually features uh, What's-His-Face, who played Johnny Cage in the original Mortal Kombat movie. Um, this one was actually pretty good, too. Nice little psychological horror movie. Roadkill, that one was a lot of fun. Dark House, that one's just good, wholesome, cheesy fun with Jeffrey Combs as uh, the proprietor of a haunted house attraction that, uh, well, ends up attracting real ghosts. And Fragile, which is actually a really good ghost story with Callista Flockhart in a children's hospital. Um, so yeah, actually overall, I, I was really impressed with this, uh, this collection and, uh, got them dirt cheap too. I got them for like five bucks a piece at Walmart, uh, last Halloween. So, uh, really good stuff. And then here we have Black Sheep, which is, uh, a big, actually pretty big budget, uh, horror movie from New Zealand featuring effects by Weta Workshop. Yes, the same guys who did the effects for Lord of the Rings. This was done after Lord of the Rings. This is after they made it big. This was like a big deal in New Zealand, apparently. They did this horror movie about killer, sh killer zombie sheep. Not as cheesy as it sounds. It's actually pretty damn good. Um, then we have Paranormal Entity, which is the asylum's answer to paranormal activity. <laughs> the asylum, of course, the company famous for doing mockbusters to cash in on the success of other movies. Um, honestly, I thought this was actually pretty decent. I mean, it's it's another kind of found footage thing, much like Paranormal Activity, but uh, tells a very different story, and I actually liked it. 
call me crazy. And then we have the Fangoria Blood Drive, which was a short film contest they did a few years back. And um, it's kind of a mixed bag. Some of them are really good. Some of them are just bizarre. And some of them are really not that good. But uh, the one reason to get this, if you can find it, is it has exclusive behind-the-scenes featurettes with Clive Barker and Stan Winston. Basically, extensive uh, interviews with both Clive Barker and Stan Winston. Stan Winston takes you on a tour of his creature shop and stuff. And, of course, he's no longer with us. So anything we can get of Stan Winston talking about his craft is uh, wonderful. Sorry if you hear my stomach rumbling. I need to have some breakfast. But um, also, all the DVD menus in this are hosted by Rob Zombie, which is pretty cool. And then here, with just a couple of sort of Japanese horror type stuff, we got uh, Mystery and Horror Tales, Volume 1. This was sent to me by uh, Nerdy Frag, a.k.a. Jadzia, a while back. And um, it's basically just more sort of Asian horror type stuff. And then Dark Water, the darker cut. Uh, this is based on uh, another Asian horror. I used to have the original of this, but uh, sold it a while back. I'm probably going to sell this one, too, so I can pick up the Blu-ray. But... Um, yeah, quite a good, uh, good, you know, supernatural horror movie. And then, of course, no horror collection is complete without Blood Rain. Got to have some Yuva Bowl in there. Yeah. Loved the video game. Was really left scratching my head as to how they could fuck up the movie so bad. But at least it has Kristana Loken naked, so how can you go wrong? And then we have the Three Mothers trilogy from Dario Argento. We have the limited edition of Suspiria. The 30th anniversary edition from Arrow Video of Inferno. This is a Region 2 release here. And then the Dimension Extreme edition of Mother of Tears. So this is the complete Three Mothers trilogy. I would like to get all of them on Blu-ray, but I'm going to hang on to this one because it is a freaking awesome collector's edition. And this one too, actually. This one I'll probably get rid of. But these two are awesome collector's editions. And then some more Argento. We have... Opera, which uh, I don't hear a lot of people talking about. I thought this was a really good one. I liked it a lot. Uh, Sleepless, which is kind of uh, a slower-paced version of Cat of Nine Tales. Not as good. Trauma, which a lot of people don't like, but I thought was a pretty decent, uh, uh, you know, sort of American giallo. And then Dario Argento and Eye for Horror, which is a Region 2 disc. And it's uh, basically just a documentary about Dario Argento and his career in horror. And uh, features interviews with other notable horror alumni. Very cool stuff indeed. And then two different editions of George Romero's classic vampire film, Martin. We have the Immortal Edition from Arrow Video. That's Region 2. And then one of the two Region 1 releases. I've done videos about both of these, by the way. And I will be sure to include links to those below. And then we have... Dawn of the Dead, the remake, which I'm probably going to sell because uh, the new Blu-ray edition includes the disc that's in here with all the extras, so there's no point in keeping that. And then uh, the Dawn of the Dead Ultimate Edition, which there has yet to be an equivalent Blu-ray of, so I'm keeping it. And it's just freaking beautiful. This has uh, all three cuts of the movie and tons and tons and tons of extras. And then, of course, we have Diary of the Dead, which I mentioned uh, when I did the Blu-ray horror shelf a few episodes ago. Um, so yeah, I actually do have all six dead movies. Um, I've got Night of the Living Dead on Laserdisc, Dawn of the Dead, and Diary of the Dead on DVD, and I've got the other uh, three on Blu-ray. So then we have Zombie 2, which was my introduction to the world of Lucio Fulci, and I actually have two more by Fulci. We've got the Arrow Editions of the Beyond and City of the Living Dead. Very good indeed. Um, yeah, gotta love, gotta love some Fulci, man. That's that's good stuff. I also recommend House by the Cemetery. That's another really good one that he did. And then I have Zombie Planet, which is an independent, very very low budget zombie movie, um, which actually plays out more like a post apocalyptic, uh, almost Mad Max type of thing just with zombies in it. Uh, there is a sequel to it. This is actually only the first half of the story. There is a sequel that actually ties it all up. It was basically like a, a direct-to-video miniseries. And, uh, yeah. And then we got some uh, Evil Dead action here. We, of course, have the Book of the Dead edition of Evil Dead 1. The Book of the Dead edition of Evil Dead 2. 
which sadly the eyeball no longer screams. Uh, well, if you check my 2008 DVD collection overview, I make it scream in that one. We've got Evil Dead, the Ultimate Edition, and then Bruce Campbell vs. Army of Darkness, Boomstick Edition. So I don't actually have any Evil Dead Blu-rays yet. I really want to get the first two because they've come out in really nice editions uh, recently. There is the Screwhead Edition of Army of Darkness, but I'm not really keen on getting that because it has some issues with... Uh, DNR and edge enhancement and stuff like that, all that stuff I hate. Here's a few cool independent horror movies. We got The Alien Factor, which is a sci fi horror, Fiend, which is kind of a zombie thing, and Reflections of Evil, which is just about a fat guy who goes freaking crazy. <laughs> all three of these are a blast for, you know, just being so bad they're good. I mean, you just revel in the badness. This one scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. This one I just laughed my ass off through the whole thing because nothing makes sense. And this one is intentionally uh, crazy and, you know, just a great movie. Okay, so that is that shelf. That was a lot of stuff. All right. Yeah, we got another Mill Creek collection. We have the Fright Night 10 movie pack. Interesting side note about this. It does not have the customary paper sleeves. It's actually a proper two-pack. Anyone who knows Mill Creek's collection will know they usually put their discs in paper sleeves. But, uh... Not the Fright Night pack, man. So then here we got the uh, special collector's edition of Near Dark, but with a minor issue. This is this was actually a common printing error. Uh, so everything's very, very beautiful, very lovely, except we're missing disc two. <laughs> so it's Near Profit. Yeah, we actually have the, uh, and it's listed as Disc 2 of Profit. It's actually Disc 1 of Profit with Disc 2 on the label as Disc 2 of the Near Dark set. Apparently not an uncommon problem. Apparently a lot of these Near Dark Collector's Editions went out with that issue. Go figure. I don't know why. And here we have some horror television. We've got American Gothic. Great series that only lasted one season, sadly. And then we have uh, The Hunger based in name only on the movie of the same name, uh, season one and two, and that is the complete series. It's an anthology horror series, basically. Uh, first season is hosted by Terrence Stamp, General Zod himself, and the second season is actually hosted by David Bowie, who, not too coincidentally, uh, starred in the movie that they took the name from. So then we have uh, a couple of vampire shows. First off, we have Kindred the Embraced, which is based on... Vampire the Masquerade, the uh, role-playing game. Uh, it's based on the old version, not the 2004 revamped version. <laughs> Get it? Revamped. Then we have Forever Night, the trilogy. Let's just uh, put this all up here. There we go. Whoa, whoa. Okay. Well, wait a minute. There we go. Okay. So we have the original movie with Rick Springfield and all three seasons of the TV series. Uh, really good stuff. Basically about a cop. Uh, about a vampire who decides to become a cop to absolve himself of his various sins throughout his hundreds of years of being evil. So, there you go. And then we have some horror classics, some old favorites of mine. we got the original Haunting, not the god-awful remake. The original House of Wax, not the god-awful remake, which also includes Mystery of the Wax Museum, which is the original, original House of Wax. Both of those are great films, love them. Legend of Hell House, which is a great British uh, haunted house movie. And The Innocence, which is based on Henry James' Turn of the Screw. Very, uh, you know, tense, wonderful, psychological horror movie. Then we have uh, three sort of public domain collections. we got Horror Classics, Trio of Terror, and Unspeakable Horror. Um, this is not to be confused with Dan Curtis's Trilogy of Terror, which was a TV movie. Uh, so this one has the Satanic Rites of Dracula, Horror Express, and Jack the Ripper. Basically some Hammer stuff and some other stuff. Uh, this one has Nosferatu, Night of the Living Dead, and House on, on Haunted Hill. Well, they listed as House on the Haunted Hill. And this has uh, some uh, silent films. We've got The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Very cool indeed. And then here we've got a few other things. We've got uh, The Serpent and the Rainbow, classic... Uh, Basically, Wes Craven's take on zombies, and it's proper zombies, too, with voodoo and stuff. Stars of Bill Pullman. Plan 9 from Outer Space. You can't go wrong with that. And then, of course, we've got Tim Burton's Ed Wood, starring Johnny Depp and Martin Landau. Very cool. Then we have the complete series 
of the Adams Family. Yeah, not strictly horror, but I mean, I think it's it's right at home in the horror section, certainly. So, gotta love the Adams Family. I do not have the Munsters yet. I really need to get the Munsters. And then I'll just show this one. We got Van Helsing, The London Assignment, which is the animated short featuring the voice of Hugh Jackman, which leads into the Van Helsing movie. And the Van Helsing movie was, of course, a huge loving tribute to the Universal Monsters classics, which I have basically all of them. <laughs> Yeah, love this. This is the uh, Universal Monsters Legacy Collection. Um, just a fantastic collection. Each one of these has like four or five movies in it. And uh, I think over the course of it, you've got like 30 some odd movies, 20, 27 movies, I think is the total count. Um, yeah, but just, uh, just a fantastic collection. Um, I've done videos about the first three. I still need to do videos about the last three. A lot of people were wondering if I had the last three. Well, yes, I do, and I, I have watched them. I just haven't got around to doing videos about them. And I will one of these days, I promise. So this is kind of like my little uh, horror cheese section. we got Hell Comes to Frogtown, where Roddy Piper has to single-handedly impregnate the world. And 1990 Bronx Warriors and Escape from the Bronx, 1990 Bronx Warriors 2. And the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Now, I guess these aren't strictly horror. These are more sort of post-apocalyptic um, sci-fi, but, eh, whatever. Uh, yeah, but I guess that actually, if I just swap these around, that actually brings us into the sci-fi section, and then they're not in the wrong section after all. We'll put the Rocky Horror Picture Show over here by Plan 9. I think that's a good place for it. Yeah, you might notice I don't sort anything alphabetically. I just kind of do it thematically. And um, if you got a problem with that, I don't care, because it's my collection, and I'll sort it how I want to. <laughs> so that is it for the horror DVDs. Um, the horror DVD section is likely going to continue to shrink in size as I replace things with, uh, with Blu-rays and whatnot. But uh, that is it as of this recording. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next time, we'll go down to the bottom two shelves here and... We're getting close to the home stretch, actually. Uh, I don't know if you've been if you've been watching the whole uh, overview. It's been going on for quite a while. <laughs> I've been doing it all in one night, and my I'm losing my voice. Um, but yeah, so next time we'll do the sci-fi shelves, and then finally we'll wrap it all up with the look at the uh, big box sets and collector's editions that uh, line the top of the shelves. Alrighty, well that is it for me to you for now. Don't forget to check the description for uh, more video links uh, to, you know, reviews of a bunch of this good stuff. I'll also include a link to the Horror and Halloween Videos playlist, which lists every single Horror and Halloween related video I have ever done. There's a lot of stuff in there that uh, I don't actually have in the collection anymore, so be sure to check those out. Alrighty, that is it for me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for watching, and sayonara.